Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest Wood Company. This week we're going to be doing a brand new finish on a table, something that we've never done before and we don't think anyone's ever done before on a resin river table. Our friends at Jekko, they're actually the ones who did this finish for us, so a huge shout out to them. You guys can go check them out and I hope you guys enjoy the video. For these slabs, we're going to be using our Black Forest Deep Resin and we're doing a tinted black color. So to achieve that, we use the Color Effects Black Dye. Personally, we prefer the Color Effects Black Dye to let's say the Ecopoxy Dye when doing transparent pores just because it leaves the, the resin a lot more clear whereas the Ecopoxy Dye can kind of give a milky or cloudy look. Uh, but that being said, the Ecopoxy Dye is better if you're doing an opaque pour. Another thing you'll notice is that we're able to do this full two and a half inches in a single pour without the need to layer it. That's because our resin has a very slow cure time. It takes a full week to cure, but it allows all the bubbles to rise up and prevents anything from overheating. This table also is going to be a waterfall table. Uh, unfortunately, the guys went ahead and cut it uh, before we could film it, but we did get the glue up on film here. And Joe is letting you know what he thinks about himself. <laughs> Another thing you might notice on this glue up is that the angle isn't quite a uh, perfect 45 degree. It's a little bit less than that. So you'll see that when we actually glue this together. And right now we're rolling on white wood glue, Type Bond 3, uh, on the wooden sections of this. And then we're gonna mix up a 24 hour epoxy to put on the epoxy sections. Reason being is that if you did use wood glue on the epoxy, you would see that in your miter. Another thing to mention with this type of joint is that you should go overboard on the epoxy uh, because if you don't have enough, you'll actually get air bubbles that get trapped in the joint. And then you're gonna see that when the piece is finished. Brad is uh, beginning to put together the base here. So it's this is a pretty intricate base design that we've done for this one. It's a white oak pyramid that has a drawer box notched into it. So the first thing here that Brad's doing is putting together that pyramid. Uh, he's just using tuck tape around the outside edges right now to line everything up. And then we're actually gonna use wood screws to fasten this together uh, that will then plug the holes with a solid white oak dowel. Uh, so everything will blend together quite nicely. We make sure the grain lines up but this piece also is going to be getting stained black, so you'll never even be able to see where those dowels are. square notch out of this trapezoidal shape here for this rectangular drawer box that'll stand and have a functioning drawer in it. Uh, big task, interesting notch. I'm going to try and utilize all my skills to try and cut this in the end, probably by hand, to a degree uh, to cut this out.
took all day yesterday, about eight, nine hours, to cut the notch into the trapezoid to accept the drawer box. Right now, uh, on a temporary fit, I have the drawer front, which is the exact same height as the box itself, uh, with a friction fit into the notch that I've cut for it. And, uh, I mean, the most important part, geometrically speaking, uh, the drawer box is supposed to sit perpendicular to this face, and so far so good with the pre-fit. Wow, big day to fit the whole box, de design the fastening of the box to the trapezoid, fit the custom hardware. We've got a custom hardware flap coming up here for the drawer front and a special notch gonna be cut into front for access to the drawer box itself as well. We'll see how it all goes. Hey everyone, so we are just on site at Jekko right now. So Jekko Finishing is actually the business that does all of our polyurethane spray finishes for us. This piece here is actually getting stained black. And there's Jim, Mr. Jekko himself. <laughs> um, we're staining all of this black today and then it's getting uh, metal ceruse into the grain. So they've got a new product called Vero Metal. Very, very, very cool. Uh, hasn't really even been used that much before. And I think this is the first time anyone's done something like this, right? My knowledge? Yeah. Never been done before. So we're trying to come up with something that would be so unique and one off that yeah. the owner of this piece can proudly say there isn't another one like it anywhere in the world. That's what we do. So maybe for the people watching, like can you kind of like just explain like what is Vero Metal? Yeah, what it is is essentially uh, ground up alloys that are ground into a fine, fine powder mm -hmm. and it's put into a polyester binder resin, yeah. which kind of holds it together, allows us to spray it on these substrates. And then when we release the resin, we, we sand and polish, you're more or less just left with the alloy yeah. and enough binder to really bond it to the substrate. And essentially then you just turn whatever piece it is into metal. Because you can work it and polish it just like you would metal, right? Yeah. So now that we've got this piece to Jekko for finishing, the first step for them to do is to actually stain the white oak black. And in order to do this the most effective way as possible, they wipe mineral spirits on the epoxy first so that if they do accidentally get some stain on there, it's not going to stick onto the epoxy and it's not going to soak in. Uh, once they've done that inside edge though, then they can get a bigger rag and go ahead and stain everything. After this, they're then going to be spraying the white brass or white bronze, sorry, Vero Metal over the whole surface. Then they have to sand it back just to expose what's in the grain. Uh, but you guys will get to see that whole process coming up.
So then we got uh, Jekko to film some of this stuff and it was actually Nicola Eddy, uh, their filmer that did it. So we'll leave her links in the description below. And what they're doing here right now is sanding off the metal that was sprayed on to expose the wood and then leave the little bits of metal in the deeper part of the grain. Uh, the wood was wire brushed before all this to kind of expose those parts of the grain and we're just trying to leave the metal in there. And this is after it's been sanded and Jim, the actual owner of Jekko, we got really good treatment here, is actually personally spraying this one himself with their two component polyurethane. Um, this product is definitely much more durable than our typical oil-based finishes. However, with a polyurethane finish, you lose the ability to do any maintenance yourself. Um, so they are more durable, they're harder to damage, but if damage happens, you're likely gonna have to get a professional to come in and touch this up for you. Whereas if you had an oil-based finish, you would be able to do it yourself. So there's pros and cons to both, but on this particular piece, uh, the sprayed finish, I think, really was the best option because it made all that metal in there pop and it just gives everything a nice smooth and even finish too. We finally have this custom white oak desk back from Jekko, all finished up and ready to ship out to our client. This is definitely probably the most unique desk that we have ever made before. Uh, it's solid white oak with tinted black resin and then what Jekko did to the, to the white oak here to get this look is they actually taped off all the resin, they wire wheeled the wood to kind of deepen the pores of it then they spray it all over the whole surface, uh, white brass barrel metal. So barrel metal is quite an interesting product in that it's not something that's made to imitate metal, but it actually is uh, real powdered metal that's suspended in a resin that you can spray. So they spray it over the whole surface and then they had to be very careful to only sand back what was on top and then leave in uh, the silver or the white brass bits in all of the deeper sections of the grain. So it was a very labor intensive process from what we've heard. Uh, it, it did turn out amazing though. And then a couple other cool things on this piece is we've got the angle on the waterfall edge uh, is not obviously completely 90. It's a little bit less than 90 degrees. So that's something unique. Um, this base that we have on here is very unique as well. So it's kind of like a one big pyramid that we've notched in a drawer box to. So it was very tricky for us to figure out how to actually notch that drawer box in. Uh, but inside here, our client has a nice little pencil drawer. So we've designed this so it's just big enough for a piece of paper in here going this way. And then he can put his pens and pencils that he wants in there. Um, this here doesn't have the, the metal to it. It's just all black and white oak. Uh, but this is a spectacular piece. Uh, it was built for a repeat client. Like I said, it's going to Ontario and we can't thank him enough for allowing us to keep building awesome pieces like this for him. And we're looking forward to seeing it in his home too. So thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. Again, this is just such a unique piece and it is always a pleasure to get to try new things like this. We'd also really like to hear what you guys think of this piece. I, I feel like this is the kind of thing where you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. So leave a comment below and let us know what team you're on. And it also really helps us out if you guys subscribe. Um, we broke 125,000 and we're almost at 130,000. And Charlie actually told me it was one of his goals to get to 130,000. He, he mentioned that to me. Um, right, Charlie? Hey, you did say that, right? Two licks means yes, so that's him saying yes. So if you guys want to make Charlie happy, you got to subscribe, and we'll see you next week.